So Qualcomm has announced its latest mobile flagship processor. That's the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 Gen 2. It's got four different types of CPU cores in it, including the Cortex-X3. It's built on a four nanometer process, and it's got probably the industry's best mobile hardware-based ray tracing. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> So around this time every year, Qualcomm announces uh, at a tech summit all the different things it's doing in, you know, in terms of mobile processors and other things that it's working on. And the big normal announcement is the flagship processor for the next coming year. And this time it's the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. So we're going to see smartphones with this processor at the end, even at the end of this year, and certainly uh, all the way through uh, 2023. So what we're going to do in this video is going to take a look at what is is in the Snapdragon uh, 8 Gen 2 and look at what it does in terms of CPU, GPU and so on. So let's dive into some of the details. So when it comes to the CPU, we've got the Cryo CPU with four different types of Cortex uh, processor. So the first one is an ARM Cortex X3 processor clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, 3.19 gigahertz. And that, of course, is the prime core giving you that good single threaded score. Then that's backed up by four performance cores. Now, normally we'd expect one plus three plus four. That's what it's been traditionally. That's what the uh, the competition are kind of doing. But in this case, we've now got one plus four plus three. So there's an extra performance core. Now, though performance cores, there are four, there's actually two of different types. So first of all, you've got two Cortex-A710 processors. So that's actually the same performance cores as you found in last time's uh, the, uh, Snapdragon. And then you've got two Cortex-A715 processors. That's the latest performance cores from ARM. So really, it's a one plus two plus two plus three uh, setup. Now, why have they gone with the A710? They're both clocked 2.8 gigahertz. Why have they gone with the A710? Because it offers 32-bit compatibility. So in some markets, mainly in Asia, 32-bit compatibility is still a tiny little thing. Most of the rest of the world moved on to 64 bits. Tiny little thing over there. So they decided to add it in. So you've got performance cores that are at least able to run some 32-bit apps. And then supporting those other cores, you've now got three, not four, but three Cortex-A510. This is the refresh version of the Cortex-A510, and they're clocked at two gigahertz, which is up from the traditional 1.8 gigahertz that you find uh, in the competition. So what do we know? That means that you're going to get a 35% increase in performance. That's Qualcomm's figure. We'll see what the actual numbers are when we get to do some benchmarking. Now, of course, you're going to see X3, Cortex X3 kind of single core uh, performance. But now because you've got that one plus four plus three setup, we're going to see a boost in the multi-core setup because you've got that extra one performance core in there rather than an efficiency core. Before we dive in deeper, it's worth mentioning you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. So when it comes to the GPU, you've got the Adreno 740, and the big ticket item is you've got hardware-based ray tracing. So that means soft shadows, uh, proper reflections, and global illumination. Now, the difference between Qualcomm's implementation, what you get in other mobile processors, is that this one supports the traversal of BVH structures. Now, I've got a whole video here on this channel about the different types of hardware ray tracing, and the different features that can be implemented. So I won't go into it now, but I will leave a link to that video in the description below. But what we need to know is that as far as I know, this is the first mobile GPU that supports hardware accelerated traversal of BVH structures, which does make it better than other uh, ray tracing implementations that we have on mobile at the moment. Other things are worth mentioning, it supports Vulkan 1.3, it supports uh, features like shadow denoising, HDR gaming, and there is a 25% increase in performance compared to the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. If you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. When it comes to machine learning and AI acceleration, of course, you've got the Hexagon uh, processor, which does all the machine learning stuff. It's got dedicated tensor and vector and scalar processors all built into that, which basically means you get an uplift in performance. In fact, under some uh, neural network test models, it can be up to a four times increase in performance compared to the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. 
Two big features to mention about the uh, hexagon processor and the machine learning capabilities. One is it supports now INT4. Now that's something that's been around for a while, but INT4 in itself, just the fact that you're using these four bit integers can actually give you a 60, 70% increase in performance on certain types of models of neural network where that is applicable. And this is now supported in hardware in the hexagon. And also there's a feature called hexagon direct link. And basically what Qualcomm does, they've built a direct bus between the uh, hexagon processor, the GPU and the ISP so that it doesn't have to rely so much on sending things into the system memory over DDR5 and then reading it from there into the ISP or into the uh, into the GPU. Now they can talk to each other across their own bus, which of course improves uh, overall performance. And we see that specifically when we come to the ISP, which we'll talk more about in a moment. I said we talk about the image signal processor. This is a ML enabled image signal processor, which means that a lot of the activity that the processor is doing, it uses ML functions to do that. And that they're calling it the cognitive ISP. Now the cognitive ISP features allow real time ML algorithms to be applied to the video stream. Now I have another video here on this channel showing how previous generations of the Snapdragon could do things like object detection, object recognition, object outlining in real time in video. Now that's been extended even further because of, for example, this direct link between the ISP, the GPU uh, and the hexagon processor. Now it can do semantic recognition, which you can see hair, it can see clothes, it can see faces, it recognizes backgrounds and it does that all in real time. Other things are worth mentioning about the ISP, 200 megapixel camera support, 8K recording in HDR, 4K recording at 120 frames a second, and AV1 video playback. So when it comes to connectivity, you've got the Snapdragon X70 integrated modem, and that supports dual 5G active SIM. So you can have 5G plus 5G or 5G plus 4G. Of course, it supports millimeter wave and sub six. Next to that, you've also got support for Wi-Fi 7, which although it isn't out yet, it will be compatible with these devices when Wi-Fi 7 is uh, finally out as consumer equipment. There's Bluetooth 5.3, which includes LE Audio. If you want to know more about LE Audio, I do have a video about it here on this channel. Other things worth mentioning besides the four nanometer process from TSMC that's used to build this processor is support for LPDDR5X up to 4.2 gigahertz, USB 3.1 type C, UFS 4.0. Again, I've got a video about UFS uh, 4.0 here on this channel and support for up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So who's going to be using this new Snapdragon trip? Well, all of the major OEMs, including Asus, Sony, Xiaomi, Oppo, Mo Motorola, and many, many more. And some devices will actually be launched at towards the end of this year. Of course, the majority of devices we'll see in the early part of next year and through 2023. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Will you be buying a smartphone with a Qualcomm 8 G2 processor in it? Let me know in the comments below.